Hey there, I'm Joni Simon, commercial food photographer. Welcome to The Bite Shot. This is where I share the things that I've learned on my journey as a food photographer in hopes that it helps you on yours. And this is video number three in a series on building your food photography business. And today I'm gonna to share with you some of my favorite tools and resources that I use when putting together commercial photography estimates. And just to revisit what we talked about last week and the different types of clients that we're focusing in on this video in terms of the commercial side of the equation. When we talked about commercial versus editorial versus consumer versus fine art, we're talking about commercial here. And to something else to clarify is that we're focused in on creating estimates here versus a bid. Because maybe you've thought that those two terms are interchangeable, bid and estimate. And in some ways they kind of are, but when we start talking about commercial photography, they are two distinctly different things. That if you are working with a client who's specifically requests a bid. And this is gonna apply more to your really large clients or advertising agency relationships. They may ask for a bid, which specifically is gonna be a little bit more set in stone. That's gonna be something more fully vetted in terms of the numbers for a specific project, that if you give a bottom line number for a bid, that ultimately what you're gonna invoice, no matter if things go over or under, is you are still stuck with that number. A bid to me is more set in stone as opposed to an estimate where we are putting together numbers that we believe are close to accurate of what it's gonna to cost to produce a given job. But at the same time, if things change, if things morph, if maybe the groceries end up being more expensive or we need to spend a bit more time or you know we may go over in some areas, then ultimately we can adjust that then when we get to the final invoice. That an estimate is a little bit more malleable in comparison to a bid. And so the things we're talking about here today are specific to commercial photography estimates. And so the very first thing that I wanna recommend you check out if you haven't already, in terms of resources, the thing that I use, the software that I use to build out my photography estimates is called Blinkbid. Now, there are lots of different softwares out there that you can use to create estimates for your proposals, put together a quote, right? You may have a software that you already like, which is great. There's a couple reasons that I specifically like Blinkbid, but mostly because it is created specifically for commercial photography in mind. And so instead of talking about it, I wanna just walk you through a couple of the different things that Blinkbid can do, because I feel like it helps to see it. So here I am in the interface for Blinkbid, and this is where I can create an estimate. This is actually from a job that I did this past year, and so you know all the numbers and all the details were what I put together for the client. I have changed the name and details there. So <laughs> keep a certain amount of mystery around here. What you can see is that here in this area, we can start to build out all of the various fees associated with producing the work that the client wants. And so what is the work that the client wants? Well, we've got this little tab right over here where we can fill in the job description. This is where we have our opportunity to be very specific about what it is that we're doing, what we're gonna be delivering, the more details you can provide in your job description, the better, because then everybody's on the same page in terms of where we're shooting and who's gonna be there and how many final images, all those great details that you would talk about on the phone, on the phone, you're doing these on the phone. Promise me you are getting on the phone with people. You're not doing this all via email. When you get on the phone with your prospective client to understand the scope of the project, the goals for the images, all those great details, that we stuff that all into the job description so everybody's on the same page in terms of what we're doing. And then we can build out all of our fees. And specifically why I like Blinkbid is because when we go into here, if we wanted to add an additional line item of something we're adding to this estimate, so we can hit that plus button, and you can see that all of the fees are already pre-populated with things that you would find on any given commercial photography estimate. Now there's a lot of these that are not necessarily applicable to food. They could be any sort of commercial work, but all of those great basics are in here. So maybe if you're also just starting to get used to what we include in a photography estimate, it's giving you ideas of, ah, okay, the photographer's fee, and we've got time for post-production or pre-production or both, because every shoot's gonna have 
post and pre-production, right? As well as our usage fees and our licensing fees. And of course, my favorite line item to add to an estimate, the food stylists, the wonderful people who make the food look beautiful, prop styling, all of those various things, it's already built into Blinkbid, which is super helpful. And then additionally, when we get into talking about usage and fees and licensing and all of that, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more in resource number two, but just to kind of touch on how that gets incorporated here, as you see here on this terms tab, this is then where we can start to populate the information about our usage license, how the client is gonna be able to use these images and for how long and in which places we can delineate all of that information here, as well as then all of our terms and conditions of when is the payment due and what happens if we cancel and all of those finer points of your terms and conditions or those contractual agreements that are coming along with this estimate. The other really nice thing is that if you're still in the process of working out that language or you don't already have a contract or already know how to write a usage license, there are actually defaults inside of the software created again from the perspective of commercial photography. So you can utilize those defaults and then start to customize them based on your needs. So I find that to be a really helpful resource. And so then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can email it to the client in order to sign off on it, or I can print it. We can do all those things. Let's go ahead and print this and print it out just so you can see how it puts it all together. And it formats it nicely, got the little logo up here. Again, that all important, this is an estimate, <laughs> contact information, and then it pulls in that job description. I like this format. This is clear and clean and easy to read, what license they're getting to use these images, a breakdown of all the fees, signature line item, and then the estimate terms, which are your terms and conditions, all of those nitty gritty details that we inserted to make sure that we all understand what we're agreeing to for this photo shoot. And so then you can send this to the client, have them sign off on it, and then what it automatically does is then turns it into an invoice to send to the client. So then we can go ahead and start collecting our deposit payments, as well as the future payments, the final payments, all of those details and all of the money is kind of kept track of here in inside of blank bed. Additionally, one other great thing about this software is that then it will also start to track those use licenses. So as you are licensing your images for clients, say that there is a specific duration that we are licensing these images to a client for two years, that that will automatically be reported inside of Blinkbid and you will start to see, oh, okay, this two year mark is coming up. It's time to go revisit that client, go see if we need to do a new photo shoot or if they wanna renew those images images and continue to use them, but a great way to continue conversations with previous clients. But now I threw a lot of terminology at you just now, and there was a lot of fine print there in that terms and conditions. And you're like, where on earth, Joni, am I going to get the information to build that out? And certainly some of that's built into Blinkbid. But then resource number two that I wanted to share with you today that I think has, to me, the best resources in terms of really understanding what copyright means, what licensing means, how we write a use license, how we define different terms of like, for example, licensing versus buyout, and how to have conversations with potential clients who may not understand these things is the APA Business Manual. Wonderful resource. Even if you are an established photographer and you've been doing this for a while and haven't read this, I still recommend you check it out and review it. There's some really helpful things that maybe you hadn't thought of before or they do just a really great job of explaining different things in layman's terms. So I highly recommend that. Additionally, they have a template terms and conditions. So again, if you don't have one and maybe what is inside of Blinkbit isn't working for you, the one that's from the APA, which this used to only be for members, but then they just, you know, put it out for everyone to have access to, which I really appreciate because I think it's great in the sense of being able to educate ourselves as well as educate our clients, but they have a terms and conditions template as a part of this business manual that is pretty thorough. Like you, again, may over time start to adjust it, add to it, or have a lawyer look at it, or kind of fuse it with another contract that you have, but it is definitely a great starting place, a great baseline if you're getting started and not sure what you're doing. One of the other things that they have in this manual that I think is really helpful if you've not fully wrapped your mind around the concept of licensing images, you know, that plenty of 
times when we do a job for a client that you know they think because they're paying us to do this work that they have commissioned this work that they automatically own the images and that's not the case you know this was a little easier to understand I think back in the day of the film days when the photographer would come do the work take the pictures and then ultimately anybody who wanted to reproduce those images or reproduce a certain amount or do certain things with them would need to come back to the photographer for the negatives. Well, obviously in the digital age, it's easier to move digital files around, but the rules, those same rules still apply that the photographer owns the copyright to those images. And so ultimately we are licensing our images for clients in order to use those in specific intended ways. There is a whole document in here that I think is super helpful of defining licensing versus buyout, because the truth is buyout is very expensive for somebody to take over your full copyright when they don't actually need it. And what they would rather have ultimately and is more affordable is a license to use those images. So they really do a great job of breaking that down and giving some really tangible examples. I'll be sure to link it down below so you can go check it out, but that you can have sort of a script prepared if in the event somebody comes back to you and is like, why am I paying a license for this? Don't I own those images? And then you can see that is a wonderful opportunity to help educate somebody about the way the photography industry works. I don't want us to continue to take this kind of position and mentality of it's a us versus them. It's really us working together with our clients for everyone's best interest. And I think APA does a wonderful job outlining that. So go check out that resource. So we've got Blinkbid, we've got the APA business manual. So then the next resource, and I use Use this one frequently whenever I am putting together numbers for licensing images to clients because that's the really that's the tricky thing I think Carl Taylor <laughs> called it the dark arts of image licensing and you talk to any commercial photographer who is putting together estimates that include licensing in it and everybody will say yeah it's it's a tricky thing but I have come up with some systems and some methods that work really well for me so that I can put together numbers that I feel confident confident presenting while also knowing that I am charging what those images are worth because that's ultimately what we have to think about when we talk about licensing we think about the value of an image and of course all images contain some sort of value right but to a particular client one particular image may be more valuable than another I think a wonderful example being if you go into a restaurant and you do a photo shoot for a local restaurant and maybe there is a product so let's say, for example, you know, we're shooting at the bar and there is a bottle in the background or featured in the scene. And that ultimately that image, of course, has value to that restaurant in order for them to use it on their website and their social media. But in terms of the number of eyeballs that are going to be on that image, it's not huge, right? Like that may just be your local area. And in terms of the income that will be generated off the use of that image, you know, it's kind of limited, right? There again, it's helping to promote the restaurant, but then not to the same degree is say, for example, if the liquor brand whose bottle is in that image, that image is much more valuable to them in terms of the amount of money that can be generated based on the use of that image. That if their product is really prominently featured and they want to use that image, well, they may run ad campaigns with it, which turns into a lot more eyeballs. And then they're going to put it on their website. And then maybe they're going to put it on a billboard. You know, there's a lot of eyeballs seeing it. And that's driving a lot of revenue to that liquor brand. And so this is where licensing is not a one size fits all proposition. It depends on the size of the business, the intended use of that image, how long they're going to be using those images for, and ultimately how much revenue is being generated based on the use of your unique image. And so when we look at the local restaurant, like that is limited in terms of the scope of the number of eyeballs and the amount of money that's being generated based on the use of that image. So we're not going to charge much, if any, licensing for the use. We're still going to document how they're allowed to use it in terms of on that estimate in those usage terms, but in terms of like what we're actually charging for that is going to be pretty minimal to not a whole lot. There's plenty of local restaurants that I do business for and they can just barely afford the cost of me to show up and do the work. So adding licensing on top of that, it's that doesn't make sense. But when we start to look at those bigger companies, those bigger corporations who are planning big things that have multi-million dollar ad spends that 
that are requiring creative images in order to propel them forward, we're gonna charge a lot more for that. And so how do we find those numbers? Well, Getty Calculator is one of my first places that I go just as sort of a cursory overview to get an idea of what something might cost to license. So if we go back, for example, into the estimate that I shared with you when I was in Blinkbid, if we come over here into Getty to start to determine the image licensing for that project is that we can take the information from the client, from the scope that we created, knowing how they intend to use these images, and then we start to plug these different factors into this calculator. And one of the things that I keep in mind is, for example, that client, they are kind of a West Coast based client here in the US, medium sized food brand, like they're pretty large, they have fairly large distribution, but they're not national and they're definitely not international. So we may end up curbing some of these numbers and scaling some of these numbers based on the size of that company. So if we go in here, select digital media, because in that situation, they wanted the images just for use on their website as collateral, web collateral, as well as social media. And they were not intending at that time for any of that to be paid advertising. Because what happens when you pay for advertising? More eyeballs see the work. And so you can charge more money. <laughs> so in this case though, we're just limiting it to digital media and social media in specific. Then we can continue on to the next step. And this particular brand had under 1 million followers in their collective social media platforms of where they're planning to use the images. And then we have a start date and then up to one year. Now, when it comes to digital media and the duration, you say, well, wait a minute, are you gonna come back after a year and tell them they need to take it down? No, anything that's been published stays up. You know the way that media works, right? Is that it's up and it's like, it's old news two days later, but ultimately they can continue to repost and share that image within the course of one year. That then after that year is expired, they don't need to take anything down. They just can't make new posts that include that image unless they renew that license, which we can track in Blinkbid. So continue to the next step, target market being the US for this particular client and this is in the food industry. And so then that pops out over here, a per image price to license that image for that intended use. But now the numbers coming out of the Getty calculator that these would be for your large clients, your multinationals, those kinds of clients. So when we're talking about something like a regional brand or a smaller brand, that then we can start to scale that downward. So for example, the West Coast brand that I was working for this, I believe I scaled that down to around the $150 mark. So again, all in consideration of how many eyeballs, how long are they using it, how valuable is this to their advertising and the work that they're doing, how much money are they gonna make with the use of the image, and how can I charge in order to make sure that's fair for me as the creator and the owner of that image. But now when I'm checking license prices, I don't just stop there, I do a little cross-reference. There's lots of different tools out there that have some established numbers. The other one that I like to use that is a paid software that I've purchased and I continue to use and I find helpful and is number three. Are we at number three on our list? <laughs> number four on our list is PhotoQuote. This is a really great software that you can also build your estimates in. I personally build the estimates in Blinkbid because I just like the web app and I like some of the other features that they have there. But you can also use PhotoQuote if you prefer to build your estimates there. But what I really love about them is that they have established numbers in terms of the different categories and types of work similar to Getty. But additionally, and one of the things that I think that PhotoQuote does really well in contrast to Getty is that they provide some additional explanation about the nuance of particular licenses, what it include, what it doesn't include, but also too, it gives you the options to quote things as a package. So for example, like if you're working with a retail outlet and they wanna have you know posters and they wanna have little kiosks and they wanna have things that the checkout and they want to have little coupons and they kind of want to use the images in a lot of different ways and the idea of like nickel and diming and finding every single little minute detail of where it's being used it feels like a lot well you can opt for the quote packs option where it will give you kind of spit out a general price then for general in-store retail use and so that can be a really helpful thing just to cross-reference I'll pull up Getty I'll pull up photo quote see how the numbers compare photo quote also has the option 
option where you can designate is this a national client or a regional client and they will scale the pricing based on the size and the exposure of that image. And exposure meaning the people who see it, not the exposure, the brightness or the darkness of the image. You know what I'm talking about. Now something in a similar vein, but specific to you if you are based in the UK, I do wonder is this also maybe applicable to folks in Europe overall? Let me know if you are outside the UK and you use this as well. But the AOP provides a usage calculator. I'll link that also down below. Super helpful, very clear cut, and how you determine usage fees specific to the UK. And you know, we're talking about the AOP and the APA and the PPA, all the O's and the A's, the organizations and associations, that these organizations are wonderful for supporting professional photographers and really dedicated to helping folks out who may be new in this, making sure you're really up to speed on industry practices and feeling confident about how to communicate what it is that we do. And so absolutely, like check out those resources or there are definitely others, depending on where you live, the country where you live, seek out your local organizations and associations. It's definitely a great resource for you. So then the next resource that I am continually revisiting and getting great ideas from is a website where they publish actual examples of estimates that have been created and been awarded to professional commercial photographers. They can give you some different ideas in terms of how different people arrange an estimate and what they're charging for and how they write things out and all those details is if you head over to wonderfulmachine.com. So if you come on into wonderfulmachine.com backslash read backslash intel, this is on their blog. And what you can do is come in here into pricing and negotiating is the category and then consulting case studies because what Wonderful Machine does, in addition to running a wonderful blog, they also provide consulting services for photographers. So if you get into an estimate or into an opportunity and you're like, I need help putting together this estimate or you just want a sounding board to make sure you're putting it together properly or to just really help you put together an estimate from scratch, you can hire them, you can pay for their consulting services to help you out. So highly, highly recommend that. Even though it does cost money and you don't know if you're going to be awarded the bid, you just think about probably how much more you're going to be able to charge than maybe you would have charged yourself. So usually those kinds of opportunities and those risks will pay for themselves over time. So go ahead though, and if you're on the blog and you want to see some sample estimates, then come on over into consulting case studies, pricing and negotiating, and then I just hit pricing and negotiating because this will then pull in all of the blog posts previously for sample estimates. They also have treatments in there, examples of treatments, just really good things to kind of case out. And so you can see, for example, you know, they have this one for industrial images for an energy company. And you're like, okay, I'm looking for something more food related. Ah, here we go, industrial food images. Although that sounds a little like, what's an industrial food image? Ah, the manufacturer needed some images. And then we get into ones like, oh, this is a great one, right? Pricing and negotiating, social media and web advertising shoot for an international beer brand. I gotta think that's probably got some really helpful insights and information in it, especially with the social media aspect. Because the social media world, of course, in terms of licensing is very new and it's still developing. So it's great to see the standards being established by organizations like Wonderful Machine. But then there is another site that also publishes sample estimates that's super helpful and that is over here at a photo editor. I also love this website because uh, you can check out their Instagram. They also share them here on the website in the blog. Sample promos that folks are sending out to ad agencies, prospective clients, different promotional materials that folks are using and you get some really creative ideas. If you haven't checked that out before, you'll have a blast coming through that. But you can see now here in the pricing and negotiating, they again and just like over on Wonderful Machine, have some different case studies that you can go through and get some ideas and things that maybe you haven't been thinking about when you're putting together an estimate. And then another resource that I rely heavily on whenever I get into creating estimates and sometimes when I need another opinion, somebody else's thoughts on it, is definitely relying on the friends that I have met in the industry, the relationships I've cultivated with other photographers, 
producers, stylists, everybody's got a different perspective and different takes on things. So it can be really helpful to bounce off of people you know who also know this industry. And granted, that takes time to cultivate those relationships. But if you're looking for an already established community, a space where people are hanging out who are commercial photographers, you want to come hang out with me, is I have my profitable pricing course linked down below. And not only is it a connection to a community where we are meeting on a monthly basis, having conversations around business and pricing and interacting in real time, but then it also provides you all of the tools and resources to effectively put together your pricing and to understand how much your time is worth, how much you need to be quoting in order to be profitable, how to put all these details together, as well as tons of sample estimates from work that I have done, all relevant to the food and beverage industry. And so if you wanna join us, we would love to have you come hang out with us. That's linked down below. But I am sure there are some other great resources out there around pricing and estimates and numbers, business resources. If there were some that I did not share here, I would love to hear about them down in the comments section below. Feel free to share them with us. But now before I go, just uh, some words of encouragement, because I know that especially if you're just starting out and a lot of these terms are new to you and you're looking at all these details and your brain is just going like, how on earth am I ever going to get there? That I just want to tell you, you know, like everything that we've talked about in this business section and honestly anything in photography, it's one step at a time, one shoot at a time, one client at a time, bit by bit, piece by piece, over time, you will start to accumulate experiences. And suddenly these things that seem really complicated and overwhelming right now will seem so much more clear. But again, dig into these resources, rely on your community, rely on your friends, don't be afraid to ask questions. We're all in this together and that ultimately working together, we're all going to get further. But I want you to know that the work you are doing is important and it is valuable and it is worth charging good money for. So don't settle for less. You promise me? Okay. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm looking forward to our final installment here of this business series. We're going to talk about keeping track of your files and organizing your files and backing up your files. I know we are, this is like the ultimate sexy series here on the bite shot of the super fun and glamorous things we talk about, but I'm excited to bring that to you in the next video. So thank you so much. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.